XO wants a round on the farmhouse in Sector 2. Azimuth 310, range 300. One round, HE. Target. Okinawa would be the longest and largest battle of the Pacific War. Men struggled and fought and bled in an environment so degrading I believed we had been flung into hell's own cesspool. Eugene Sledge. The whole island's a cemetery. The only way to get through the Battle of Okinawa is to take every day that it requires and spend every life that it was going to take. Okinawa seemed to be a clear preview of what a battle in the Japanese home islands was going to be like. It was the most miserable of all places. You know, it was just mud and rain, and they didn't bury the dead. There was no time. Just felt the only way you're going to get out of here is to get killed. It's an epic battle. It's going to be the greatest air, navy, and ground battle in world history. The savagery, the utter disregard for life on Okinawa is horrible. In early 1945, U.S. forces focused their attention on an imposing objective, Okinawa. But though the Japanese were losing more and more outlying territory, on the home island, the Japanese military forces would be able to muster sufficient manpower to fight a strong defensive battle. The island of Okinawa was attacked for two purposes. First of all, to secure a staging area for an invasion of Japan but most importantly to support a huge airbase complex, both for strategic bombing of Japan and for a large fleet of tactical aircraft that were designed to support the initial invasion. It was very close to Japan. I think it was less than 350 miles away. And the airfields on Okinawa would be tremendous help to our Air Force. General Schmidt, other generals told him that they could expect on the landing, 80 to 85 percent casualties. That must have sent cold chills up their spine. I was scared silly. And when they said it was going to take four days to get up to that airfield, I thought, oh, man, this is going to be bad business. We fully expected murderous resistance. And we got it later. Our first month, we never did run into any uh, organized resistance at all. And then on. May the 1st, we relieved uh, the 27th Army Division, and all hell started. We were resigned only to the fact that the Japanese would fight to total extinction on Okinawa, as they had elsewhere, and that Japan would have to be invaded with the same gruesome prospects. Eugene Sledge. Okinawa is always seen as the paramount suicide fight of the war because of the kamikaze attacks on the fleet that brought the Army and the Marines to Okinawa. Kamikazes were the great killer of the last uh, year of the war in the Pacific. Almost 4,000 Japanese aviators would be killed in kamikaze attacks. It was the final mark to Americans that the Japanese were totally and utterly beyond the pale. Japan knows it can't win the war, so it, it has one last chance. This is it. One last chance to convince the Americans of the cost they're going to have to pay if they invade the homeland. They knew their days were numbered. They were, you know, uh, hoping for some brand of sort of like political, economical, tactical miracle. Yeah, we were right in their backyard. And <laughs> the last thing they want to do now is lose Okinawa. And this, they, they did everything they possibly could do to stop us. That's fine for their own turf now. Every damn foot we go south, they'll get meaner and meaner. The increasing dread of going back into action obsessed me. It became the subject of the most torturous and persistent of all the ghastly war nightmares that have haunted me for many, many years. The dream is always the same, going back up to the lines during the bloody, bloody month of May on Okinawa. Eugene Sledge. The island itself was one ridge and then a valley and another ridge. One ridge and another a valley and another ridge. And there was always opposition on that ridge. You never hit a ridge that you didn't get opposition from. The Japanese have high ground. And um, they also have more artillery. 
on Okinawa than they had in any battle in the, uh, in the Pacific. There were 8 million artillery shells fired in the battle. That's an artillery shot every second. So the battle just chewed up the landscape, killed countless people. We landed with 243 men in K Company. Only 15 of the original veterans were still around to walk away without injury. The main thing about Okinawa is that we're introduced to civilians, collateral damage, civilians being uh, caught in the middle. The Japanese indoctrinated the Okinawans to believe that they fell into American hands, they would be tortured and killed or raped. Okinawa was as, as bad a place as it was. That was the place where eventually uh, they saw uh, suicides uh, on, the, on the parts of, uh, of civilians. The Japanese used Okinawans as civilian shields, and it was something that stunned the Marines who fought there. <laughs> Those Okinawans who chose to try to come within American lines faced the fact that they were just as likely to be shot by the Japanese as they were by the Americans. In late May, the rains came, and they're so strong that the tanks can't get up anymore, and the LVTs can't get up, and the churning of all their digging and fighting has left them just sitting in a gigantic mud pile. The Marines take great pride in never leaving their dead behind and burying their dead with solemnity. But you couldn't do that at Okinawa. The rains were so constant and the mud so deep, they couldn't get the Amtraks in there without getting stuck to get the bodies out. It was a wrenching day-to-day -day issue as to what sort of effort should be made to recover the dead and give them proper burial at the possible expense of the lives of other Marines. Many of our men were lost to what was clinically called combat fatigue. But frankly, it just meant cracking up. You two, get him out of here. And that was, it was quite prevalent on the front line of Okinawa. There's a higher percentage of psychiatric casualties on Okinawa than in any battle in the Pacific. A lot of guys really felt themselves slipping here. Eugene Sledge just about loses his sanity at night with the flashes of the flares going up and the Japanese infiltrators coming in and the shelling that never stops, it never lets you sleep, it doesn't let up, it just keeps killing Marines. The conditions tax the toughest I knew almost to the point of screaming. It is too preposterous to think that men could actually live and fight for days and nights on end under such terrible conditions, not be driven insane. But I saw much of it there on Okinawa. And to me, the war was insanity. Eugene Sledge. The first atomic bomb is dropped on Hiroshima. The Battle of Okinawa has been over for well over a month. But the Marines are still there on the island preparing for the invasion. And that's when they get the news. There wasn't any of us really realized how much damage had been done with that atomic bomb. But uh, in a few days, we begin to get reports as to how many people that it had killed. And I thought to myself, even though they fight to the death. If they've got any sense at all, they, they should surrender. Gene Sledge describes how he and his combat buddies uh, initially refused to believe the news that Japan had surrendered, not because they didn't want to believe it, but because they thought that to find out that that story was not true would be too totally crushing as an emotional experience to endure. We thought the Japanese would never surrender. Many refused to believe it. Sitting in stunned silence, we remembered our dead. So many dead. So many dreams lost in the madness that had engulfed us. Eugene Sledge. <laughs>